welcome to Stories of Hope. I'm Christine Hotchkiss. Each week, I bring you stories of education, inspiration, and my biggest word of all is to give hope. Today, I want to take and acknowledge my studio sponsor, the Motivated Mind Group, your creative agency here in downtown Chandler, as well as I want to say thank you to my sponsor episode for today, and that is my media, my source media, excuse me, it is a printing company known for its personal attention and out-of-box thinking that helps businesses succeed. They are a husband and wife owned small business located here also in Chandler, Arizona, that offers a large variety of printed items including small format commercial printing, large format signage, custom apparel, and promotional products with over 20 years of industry experience. Thank you to my source media. Now to my interview. This one's good because of how I met this lady. <laughs> my guest today is Jennifer Scott. She is the producer, the director, the writer, the actress to the movie Eyes Upon Waking. It is an inspi it's inspired by a true story about one woman's struggle to come to terms with her own existence. This project is about the disease of suicide and how it is misunderstood by society. The film uncovers the darkness in the minds of those who suffer from their emotions, yet shows how light can be found with the right kind of help. Yep. This film is for any person with a friend or a family member who has taken their own life and is left asking why. This is the topic of conversation that is very sensitive. Please help me welcome both my guest, Jennifer Scott, and Judy Carmen Gonzalez. Hello. <laughs> Hi. So I had the privilege of actually doing the Q&A in a film festival up in Sholo, mm. and you were there, your film was being pr uh, premiered there, and I didn't get to see it, but I heard such great ravings about the reviews, and you won, you won several awards. And so I was like, I gotta know who this little lady is. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the award was bigger than me. It, <laughs> it was, it was, but a very well deserved one at that. And this is about you. Yeah. What, I, I don't wanna say the word what inspired you, but why did you decide to put your story, as we know everyone has a story, why did you decide to put your story into a movie and be vulnerable for the whole world to know that you weren't perfect? <laughs> Um, well, so believe it or not, um, so 22 years ago, I tried taking my life twice within a week. Oh, and in a week? In a week. Okay. Oh, okay. yeah, I, I wanted, I was determined. Okay. Um, and during that time, I wasn't really getting any good acting roles, so they sit here and say, as an actor, you know, write a role for yourself. And so I was going to write a short, and because it's something I knew, and I thought, you know, this might have different ranges. And I hired uh, Andy Golub, who's my co-writer on this. And, you know, I said, yeah, you know, maybe I'll try directing it. You know, let's just kind of see how it goes. Well, when I was watching TV, Maria's, uh, Maria Osmond's son um, just took his life and one of the actors from Growing Pains. Yeah. And what I was really surprised at was um, that the media was picking it up or that they were talking about it. Because usually celebrities, they keep that private mm -hmm. or it's yeah. not mentioned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was like, mm -hmm. okay, this is interesting. Um, so I went back to Andy and I said, something tells me we've got a feature here. <laughs> so yeah. why not for fun? I didn't think it would ever go anywhere. I was like, why don't we just write it? You know, if anything, it'd be good for me getting everything out there on the paper. Yeah. Um, and so then I started showing it to people. Mm -hmm. And to my surprise, they're like, these are my words. How do you know my story? And I'm oh. like, what do you mean those are your words? That's, that's my story, that's mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, oh my gosh, we're all in this together, yeah. but mm -hmm. suffering silently. And I knew I had to do it then. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem was, <laughs> I've never produced. <laughs> that was my next question. <laughs> How do you produce something when you're actually, this, it's your story? How do you put it into words? Because now you've also got emotions in there. Yeah. So how are you gonna do it clearly? Well, and I was never planning on playing myself. Well, we'll get to yeah, that. Yeah, we'll get to that too. Okay. But so for that, um, you know, I've been an executive assistant for, I think at that time, like way over 20, 25 years. Uh -huh. And so I looked at it as like, well, it's a business, you know? So you know, these are the different tiers and what you have to do. Um, I'm like, well, why not treat it like a business? 
the only thing is, <laughs> it would have been nice if I could hire people <laughs> in the beginning <laughs> stages. Easier, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but you learn a lot. And to tell oh, you the yeah. truth, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I wish now that I, I know that I've gone into producing, I wish I would have gone to film school. Um, yeah. But what I've learned too is, you know, you want to you want to learn filmmaking. You, you make a, a film, not not a short, a feature. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's that's basically how it began. Where it started out as my story, and I became a voice for others. And so my character, even though the audience, they're reliving, they're going through everything that Taryn's going through, um, and discovering, um, but they're also. Uh, feeling as if, wow, somebody gets me, or that's what I have. It, I there. call it the me too factor. Me, okay, okay. Yeah, you know, oh, I'm going through that too. But oh, then okay. you're going, that's why I call it the me too factor. Okay, okay. That you can relate, but not everyone wants to say, out of shame, people don't want to say, yeah. I did True. this, you already said, I yeah. already tried it twice in a week. Can I tell you something? This yeah. will probably be the first time also. We're not perfect, no. and I think the oh, society yeah. has this way of us thinking, or we think society has this way that we have to look a certain way to have the right relationship, or we have to look a certain way to have a certain way of living, yeah. or have friendships only in this way, or have a career in this way, and, and in fact it's not, and so I also have some stuff that I've had to deal with, and we can look like we're put together on the outside, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, mm -hmm. let, let me tell but you. But we fall apart that I also Nobody, tried to attempt yeah. on my life twice at one time, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you hear a lot of that because a lot of people, once I started putting this out there and building the website and everything, mm -hmm. everyone's like, done, we had no idea. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, because yeah. I was always a happy-go-lucky one. See? I was the one that was there for you, yep, yep. but I was always suffering silently at home, mm -hmm. and I was in hell. And that's why lie. I said, <laughs> we have this image that we no. think we have to be put together, and inside there, the, some of the people that are so well put together are the most broken. Yeah. And being yeah. vulnerable is something they don't want to feel comfortable with because then that means I'm not who I was expected to be or someone would see me that way and they won't see me that way anymore, right. whatever those yeah. are. And yeah. I felt that way too. I was going through my own struggles as anybody does. So, um, Judy, you actually took a part in this Film. I did. I had and to pay her a lot. <laughs> 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 and you had to mention, you had already mentioned, you gave it away, um, that you didn't know that you were going to play your own part. Right. What part of this made you decide that this was, you needed to do it? Um, the actresses that I was auditioning for to play this role, mm -hmm. um, it was more of like, this is a role I've always wanted to try. It's a great uh, challenge. And my thought was, Taryn's not very likable in the beginning. What's the character's name? Taryn. Taryn, okay. Yeah. And a lot, it's just, I was scared. I mean, the, the only thing I knew, because what, what ended up happening was like, I went to a, um, it was a holding facility, meaning the state of Arizona says if you try taking your life, mm -hmm. uh, you have to be under ob mm -hmm. observation mm -hmm. for up to th five days. Mm -hmm. And then they decide, do we lock you up, you need more help, or do we feel you, you know, you're safe, you can go out, you know, to society. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's a lot of that, I know what the smells were. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I know what the temperature was. Um, I, I know that the only thing I knew uh, from this type of place was what I saw in, in the TV and the movies. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I'm very curious. So, do if I look at you the wrong way, are you going to lunge across and try to harm me or right, something? Yeah. But to my surprise, I got like more love letters <laughs> and stuff. Um, yeah. But what I realized is. The audience, how do you, how do you, how, do, how does the audience cheer for somebody that's not very likable in the beginning? Not understanding that they're just scared. Mm -hmm. um, and hence, you know, bringing Mrs. Kelly, so it actually shows Taryn's more true side. But when I was auditioning these actors, I just felt that they did not really connect with the connect character with you it. were trying to portray your own story about, right? And to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Yeah. But then I said, wait a minute. I really rock as an actress. <laughs> Why would I give somebody else to play my life when I'm going to bring in yeah. the reality and the truth to it? Well, and here yeah. you're also able to connect with the people more. And yeah. I know I just did a project of my own. When you're connecting with them, the emotions are real. The oh, only part yeah. that's the oh. tough part <laughs> is, and I'm sure you can relate to this, there are things that you left back in that time frame that you've gone past and healed, healed. worked with. Yeah. And there's still always going to be triggers. That's always going to be. Yeah. But you're now going back, and it's a challenge to say, I got to go through this feeling again. 
but now you have more knowledge going through it, so you know you're not going to follow through with what you initially that, have done. That, believe yeah. it or not, it was very um, cathartic for me, but also the challenge was, because it took me so 12 years to get this done, mm -hmm. um, I would be moving on, I'd become stronger, or learning how to recognize and deal with my depression, because mm -hmm. there's never going to be a cure. So my thing is, we gotta learn how to live with it, but there is a good way to, to live with that. So we talked about the suicide yeah. part, and we didn't talk about where the depression came from. Uh, it's a chemical imbalance. I, I did so much research on this, mm -hmm. because when I realized I wasn't going to die, I went to the Mayo Clinic, because I went everywhere. I'm like, I'm gonna discover, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's gotta be a cure for this. Yeah. And what I realized is no two brains are the same. Yeah. Um, and because of that, and it is a chemical imbalance, um, the, a lot of people, you know, they the, the word depression just comes with, ooh, stay away, or you're that, or, you know, I don't want to talk to you, where they don't realize that a, a, a lot of very loving, intelligent, creative people suffer from this. Mm -hmm. But Edison, Einstein, Lincoln, mm -hmm. um, and so it just, uh, I just, here, here's what I knew. When, I, when people first started asking me about my film to pitch, I used to say, well, this, this character, Taryn. Mm -hmm. And like you said, too, but I just realized, I said, ah, oh, screw it. 22 years ago, this is what I did. Yes. This is me, I'm, I'm Taryn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I realized people were like, paying attention. And I could still, because this was back in like 2013, I could still see people kind of like, I want to talk to you, but I'm afraid to. But what mm -hmm. I realized, because I've been promoting this since, well, we started writing in 2010, but by the time we were going to filming again in 2015, people were actually communicating with me or reaching out. And now on my set, it's just, oh, it was yeah. fantastic. It was just like, oh yeah, just an average conversation, but I, because people mm -hmm. felt safe. And I love that direction that we're going. I, I, I still think we're a ways from it, but we're getting there. So what's, yeah. you already mentioned this, the, uh, the chemical imbalance, and mm -hmm. there are a lot of people that would say that as well. Some, it has to do with what their walk of life is and what has been a trigger. Right. Which with that, or even like, you know, you look at the NFL players. Yes. With there now the studies where their head bangs, you know, so many times trauma. and everything like uh -huh. the, the trauma and all mm -hmm. that, where it's like, oh, well, yeah. what's happening them doing these crazy yes. antics? So there's there's so much still to be studied on it. Mm -hmm. But right now, and you know, I could be correct, I'm just going from my own experience. Um, I just, all I saw was everybody was just being over medicated and not talking about it. And, and what's happening is like, especially with creative types, they're like, I'm a zombie, I can't do this, I'd rather just not be on it, and that's not safe, necessarily, mm -hmm. as well. Um, but I always tell people, because I was, I was fortunate, and Judy, you're a godsend to me as well, because I mean, I still suffer. Yeah. But I, the, the difference is, um, checks and balances, the big one is, am I eating and am I sleeping? I, can, I cannot right. stress that a lot. It's those, yes, those and triggers. And what are you eating, too? And what are you, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. 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 <laughs> but I, I had a support group back then where I could call anyone, um, and just be like, man, I'm in a dark place. And the first thing they would say, have you eaten <laughs> or drank <laughs> no. or, you know, slept? Um, but then when I started getting through this film and I started getting stronger and everything, because I think what it was was even though I was playing myself, I was so busy, you know, producing this mm -hmm. that that took away from, you know, my thoughts and everything mm -hmm. because it, it, it moved or, oh my gosh, I'm doing this for everybody else, mm -hmm. you know, so I still wasn't working on myself necessarily. And a lot of people yeah. stay busy for that very reason. Yeah. If I stay oh, busy, yeah. I don't have to deal with it, but what they don't realize is that they just keep holding it more and more and more. It just yeah. keeps oh. building up more and yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. So was there anything that was traumatic in your life that made you feel maybe the depression more? Because not everybody gets depression. Um, or anxiety or anything like that? Was there something that may have triggered? Because I, I had this conversation not too long with someone else. Is I feel that life gives us our own issues in our lives, mm -hmm. and then we're dealing with how we were raised with other generations that are giving you their trauma and their baggage because they did the best that they knew, they thought they knew, and then now you're holding theirs and yours and life and society. Mm -hmm. Was there something that maybe came about in your life that amplified the It did when we, were f when we were filming in 2019. Uh, um, the, at the end of the, towards the end of the third act, uh, what came out as delivery mm. was not how I planned it. Oh, I just went there, oh. and what triggered was my mom. Mm -hmm. um, the abuse. I was uh, mentally, physically abused. I left home at fourteen. Was living on the streets, um, and it's interesting too because what you're saying. Like I remember, I called my mom um, when I was in New York City back in 2000, 2000 2001. Um, I wanted to see if. Like, 
she felt guilty for what she did and the abuse and everything. And she's like, what are you talking about? I raised you great. But then I learned, I researched that she was severely her abused. Her own trauma. Too. And her trauma, mm -hmm. so sh her abusing me less than what she had, in her mind she thought she was doing something right. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to forgive her. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to love myself. Mm -hmm. And I think that <coughs> that is a big key <coughs> to that is allowing yourself to be who you are. You know, I, I, I guess with the depression was always like, I didn't feel like I, f what was wrong with me? Why am I different? Why do I think different than everybody else? Or that's our perception. We don't know that everyone right. else has got that same thought process in their mind. Exactly, and especially when you're young. Oh yeah. And, and it's interesting because I didn't know, I'm sure the depression started, I didn't really realize I had the depression until my 30s, because I think I was 33 when I tried this. Oh. And now I'm meeting people younger and younger, yes. which has surprised me. And I think I might have known that, but I was just worried about where am I going to sleep or eat yeah. <laughs> um, at that time. Um, so I didn't, didn't really understand that. But what I came out of it is, you know what, I don't care if you like me because I like myself. <laughs> and that's all that matters. Uh -huh. And it took me so long yeah. to get there. Mm -hmm. and, and doing this film, the first two, two years that we were filming it, uh, yeah, it was great, it was fun, you know, we didn't have the whole ensemble. But in 2019, I mean, my production designers listened tremendously, and I would walk on set, and nobody existed. I mean, I, I transported back to when this took place, and I didn't expect that. Mm -hmm. And I, I went deeper into my depression, was actually depressed while I was on set, because I wasn't eating and sleeping, but I was just so thrown into it compared to like when we filmed in 2013, 2015. Yeah, and you're going back to where you had already gone past yeah. that, and now it's brought back some, some trauma and some PTSD. Yeah, it, I, and, and that's the thing. I didn't realize I had that there. And so, like, when I was writing this, I didn't want to sit here and put about the abuse growing up because a lot of people are like, oh, well, that's why you tried taking your life, because <laughs> you were abused or you got tattoos or this or that. And I said, um, no, no, we got to break that stigma. And I know you were asking me earlier about my head being shaved mm -hmm. and the choice. So in your in your character, yeah. and I did get to see some of this, you mm -hmm. had shaved your head. Right. What was that part of the character? Or you actually? Well, okay, so I was I was living in Montreal at the time. I couldn't work because uh, I didn't, you know, have a visa and the gentleman I was engaged to could. And um, I started losing my hair, you know, in my 20s. You know, talked to doctors and the doctor said, well, you know, if you shave it, it tends to grow back and thicker. Oh. And so I said to Kevin at the time, I said, hey, honey, <laughs> um, since I can't work and I'm not really going out anywhere, I, do you mind if I try it? You know, I, I wanna see if it works. With depression, and Hemingway says this best, he said that you can spend a year planning your demise or you wake up in five minutes and boom, it's, it's done. And that's exactly what happened to me, was I was isolated, and you've got the winters in Montreal, and I, I really wasn't seeing anyone. Kevin was working long hours. And it just, a trigger was we had an argument, a breakup, and people like, I, I did not try taking my life because of a breakup. I'm sorry, no man's worth it. <laughs> um, but it was the end of like, oh my gosh, I spent 33 years of my life like this. My life's never gonna get any better. It's gonna be like this. I can't imagine this hell. And boom, I just went there and I didn't plan it. So hence, my head was shaved. Oh, and by the way, it does work. When you shave your head, it does grow <laughs> thicker. So yes, thank you. Um, so when we were writing this, I got so tired of people sitting here, you know what I mentioned earlier, oh, you were abused, oh, oh you, because you, you know, you have all these tattoos. Put a label this. on it. Right, yeah. and so mm. I said, the audience might be confused in the beginning. They might think I have cancer or whatnot. I said, if I'm doing my job right as an actress, they're gonna forget after 10, 20 minutes mm -hmm. that my head is shaved. Mm -hmm. um, they can make their own judgment. It's so funny because my wardrobe person, and because it was cold in 2015, um, all the flannels, I was like, boy, I look like a tomboy. <laughs> I mean, I was a tomboy growing up, but I was like so thankful because I was cold. But then I was like, oh, by the time you, you, know, you come out now, it's like, it's so cool, everybody has their head shaved. I'm like, no, I thought about that <laughs> way before it was cool. <laughs> but I wanted to, what was important to me, this film is 85% verbatim. 
And the greatest thing is that we are educating people, not just entertaining it, educating them. And a lot of people don't realize how much humor um, is in there. I thought, okay, I already know my audience. I know 95% of my audience that is gonna relate. It's the 5% that I wanna change 1% out of. I said, if I can change just 1% out it of only, that. You know what, it only takes one person. Yeah. So 5% is big. Yes. Yeah. 5% yeah. is big compared to just, it takes one yeah. person. I yeah. like that. And so I've had people that said, Jen, if it wasn't for you, I have no interest, I don't understand, yes. I can't relate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said, I not only was educated, mm -hmm. I laughed, I cried, mm -hmm. but I walked out of there feeling everybody has to see this movie. Yeah. Blew yeah. me away. Mm -hmm. Because you hope, <laughs> but, but to actually achieve that, holy cow. And it still affects me now because now that we're, you know, doing the festivals and everything, to hear the feedback of um, just people saying, you know, it's as if you wrote this for me, or you've given me hope, or I was really mm -hmm. feeling my lowest the other day. And, yeah. and I can't believe I'm getting emotional right now, but it's just because this is what I, I wanted to achieve with this film. That's why I felt like we can get all these celebrities but I don't want them to be taken out of the moment. I want more relatability. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't you I agree? Yeah. The word vulnerable. People are like, oh, um, you know, I don't want to be vulnerable. Yeah. But it could go one of two ways. Two way, yeah. You being vulnerable is allowing that one person or five percent yeah. to true. say thank you, thank yeah. you for being that voice that I'm afraid that I didn't have or didn't know that I had or no one's going to understand but now they can understand because I'm going to show them because I can't say it but if they see someone else because we always take advice from someone else right yeah. Yeah. never the person <laughs> that we're asking <laughs> and then the other part is it frees us but you also yeah. with being vulnerable has to come trust yes and the right person's in your life or person that you have to know where that vulnerable part of who you are is going to be okay and safe yeah. with that. And you put yourself completely out there because you said it was all about you, not in a selfish way, but then now you've got your 5% yeah. you know, that yeah. say thank you for being vulnerable because I trust you to share your story with me right here yeah. that will in return also do the same thing your film has done. Oh, so we'll so. get into this because Judy's been sitting here so patiently. <laughs> well, you know, I, I I get emotional too. I see. I, 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 when she was talking, I, I, I tried to <laughs> <laughs> not to. <laughs> so you played a part in this film. What yes. part did you play? And tell me about the character that was supporting okay. what she was doing. I was the mother of Maria, which Maria was a uh, a young girl that was placed in the same place where she was at in, mm -hmm. um, on the film. Mm -hmm. And she was having issues with her family. Mm -hmm. um, so I was there yelling at her, actually. I was screaming at her. I was upset with my daughter. Mm -hmm. And I, you know what? I took that role not knowing how deep it was going to go. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth. Yeah. When I got the call, um, I thought, okay, how did they find me? How, that's the first thing that crossed my mind. And then I learned by talking to, to Jennifer and others um, that were on the set when I was there, before I arrived, of course, um, they said to me that I had worked with the person that I worked, the, uh, the mo I, I played the mother, Mar Maria's mom. Mm -hmm. So her brother is a director also from Chicago. I'm originally from Chicago. I had worked with One. him. <laughs> yes, okay. I had worked with him okay. many years That's ago, and I'm talking right. way back. I was surprised they even remember my name. <laughs> you made an impression. <laughs> and when they told me that, I said, oh, I remember Juan. Yeah. So his sister was the daughter on the film. <gasps> yeah. My daughter. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So yeah. that's, it. But, <laughs> but anyway, it was really interesting. But like I said, I didn't expect it to go as far as it did. And I am, I have to say, I'm, I'm so uh, proud. Yeah. You should of be. Jennifer. Oh no, also. you! Your performance no, no. is amazing. Are you kidding? I, <laughs> I played the mom, the mean old mom, yelling at my daughter there. Um, and I think you know what? When I was growing up, that's all I heard—the mm. screaming and yelling and stuff. Me you too. know, 
And so, I, you know, I, it's touching to me because I had family members also that, that were not all there, to be honest. Isn't it and interesting how you came in to just be an actress? and take a part on a role that you weren't really sure, even though we read the script, because yeah, I just yeah. got to do my own, so yeah. I now understand and respect it wholeheartedly, as well as the heart you put into it, that she, in her story, brought something that was deep in you that you didn't even think was gonna come about. Oh, definitely. All because of one other person sharing something because they were vulnerable to say, this is what's happened to yeah. me. Yeah. And then you were talking about the role that you're playing in a facility of a bunch of people, I'm assuming, because I haven't seen all of the film, mm -hmm. that were there f not for mental health issues, but for different things. And you're yelling at your daughter because of something you didn't understand as the character. Exactly. And her own traumas, as I mentioned a little while yeah. ago, the traumas that we each carry yeah. on from generation to generation until we say, it stops with well, me. Well, and here, and, it, and this is, you know, Maria mm -hmm. existed. Mm -hmm. And what was great is, and as an actor, um, and, and, and trusting and what I told because Judy I remember you're like well you know uh, read the script and I'm like well you have no lines <laughs> but <laughs> here's what I want I want you to create the dialogue but I want it I want yeah. it in Spanish mm -hmm. I want it realistic yeah. and you know the story that I was told with Maria Maria was so important to me because um, I in real life, she told me that her family didn't want her to be with her boyfriend who was, you know, she was young and her boyfriend's probably like 20 years older. And I'm like, well, that's ridiculous, so they're locking you up for this. It went further, you know, mm -hmm. obviously, too, yeah. you know, yeah. in the family. But it, it also, what I love how, how the scene comes out is what happens in the case of people with, with depression is friends and family turn their depression onto them. Well, look what you're doing to me. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoa, 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 this person, this person's going through this. Mm -hmm. Don't turn it around mm -hmm. on you. Mm -hmm. And so that's why when you see my film, I'm gonna, I, I, I guarantee you, it is not like any other film in this subject matter. Mm -hmm. I kept it so brutally raw and honest. But what works on this film is it's per the perspective of us mm -hmm. that try taking our life continually thinking about it. Not, you know, we all get sad, everybody does. Mm -hmm. um, it can come and it can go, mm -hmm. but when it's lifelong, mm -hmm. and I needed to say, wait a minute, stop with your, y if you want to understand this, or you don't understand it to have this, and you played it, y y all of you, you know, even there, every, everybody that was in that scene, so spot on, it was as if I was witnessing it for the mm -hmm. first time, yeah. even though I already saw it. And I just gave a little direction. But I also researched the, the buttons out of my <laughs> my cast, and I just knew you could do it. I was just like, yeah. I know you can do it. Go, go, go for it, and you did. It so was there's a little healing in there for you as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah and, and so. this is what I'm learning too. I didn't realize yeah. that, and oh. wow. It was, yeah, it oh, sure man. was. I, a lot of wow. things, a lot but, of But things. what you Oof. said, you know, little things that we do in life, we don't realize the smallest no. little things mm -hmm. that can affect in such a great positive way, and, mm -hmm in open doors. Well, and discussion. it could be another part too, where we're doing stuff we didn't realize that we're hurting someone else maybe too. Yeah. And it's hard to try and put yourself in a position all the time. Like you said, we go through the roller coaster of emotions, but you're like, well, you made me feel this way. And they're like, well, I didn't mean to. Yeah. You know, or you've got yeah. someone that says, this is what I'm going through, but oh, let's turn it on everybody else. So there's so many different oh, facets yeah. to our emotions and yeah. our, lo our lives and our stories. That end scene mm -hmm. that when you do see this, um, I apologize to the doc. I didn't do that in real life because now that I've been far away from it, because I told everybody, because they were like asking if I forget, because my dad found me the second time. And, like, and I got to talk to your yeah. dad in real life too. Yeah. 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 And, and he's one yeah. that, you know, doesn't suffer, doesn't understand. Yeah. But they're like, did you ask for his forgiveness? I'm like, I didn't tr do this to hurt him. I did this to stop my See. pain. Yeah. Um, so it's, so it, with Dr. Kepler, I was surprised where I went there to say, I'm so sorry, mm -hmm. which I never said in real life. And I guess that was a way of me saying that to my dad. And, mm -hmm. and that was to tell you, my dad seeing that, the tears in his eyes, that's really the first time he. I actually <laughs> asked <laughs> him when I met yeah. him and yeah. when I did the Q&A up there, and he told me that very moment too, that he had found you. And, and I said, how does that make you feel now? And he started crying and that you did that. The forgiveness is such a big thing. 
Um, Plus, I yeah. yeah, and I didn't realize I the impact yes. on that end. Yes. Um, so it does on, on both ends. So mm -hmm. suicide not good. No. But let's move forward. Yep. And and educate on how we don't have to have such right. a yeah. high range on that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I have one final question. It's not as deep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I say this in every one of my interviews. I don't know where I came up with it, but it works for me. Okay. And if this was one and only question that I could ask someone and I have to walk away with making my own assumption of who they are, not in a good or a bad way, just, oh, okay, and then be able to go along with my life. It's this question. So I'm going to let Judy go first since she didn't get to talk as much. It's I know. fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did drag her on at the last minute. Okay. <laughs> what message would you like to leave everyone based on your journey of life? Um, wow, that's, that's really that's a good question. A good, very, very good question. In fact, I always tell people, to be honest, that you have to be true to yourself. And I'm about to cry, and I don't want to do okay that. And you're okay to do that. Um, you have to be true to yourself, mm -hmm. and you have to be as open as possible. <sighs> Vulnerable, yes. Yep. And you know what? Here's the thing too. And I didn't mean to interrupt because no, I understand no, the fine. cry part. I have a tendency to do that. You know why? Because it's really who we are, and exactly. sometimes we're afraid to tell someone, yeah. "I'm not okay today." Yeah. Or I, I want to just cry. Reach Doesn't out. Doesn't make you weak. No, though. it just does not. But I was raised thinking, you "Don't reach cry." Out. I'll give you a reason yeah. to cry. I'm like, I'm not crying. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's certain things that I'm like, that person's not going to see me cry because I don't want them to think yeah. they just got something <laughs> over me. Because yeah. I've had that to happen yeah. to me too, so yeah. it's a it's a matter of I think where it's coming from, oh, and right now course. it's coming from your heart. Yes. So I'm thank you for for sharing that you yes. would feel that way. Well, thank you. <laughs> because we do all have a walk of life, and you know, yeah. we don't have just one story in our no. lives. Oh, there are multiple yeah. things that come about our day, but the one thing we can learn is to try to recognize in our lives those things that are trauma that we are carrying. Yes. But then who else is stuff from mm -hmm. generation or uh, relationships? that we're carrying that are not giving us the chance to be happy and true to ourselves or someone who is new into our life, personally or professionally, they didn't put that feeling in you. Yeah. So yeah. don't let them be the one that makes you feel you have to always feel that way because someone else made you feel that way. Absolutely. I hope that made sense. No, that makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. My yeah. question to you is the same. What mess would you like to leave based on your journey of life? Oh, hope. Um, one thing, you know, you yeah. took the word depression mm -hmm. and you take, you remove three letters, depression equals press on. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It does. Um, press on. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I, I'm having a hard time. I, going back to love, just genuine love. Love yourself. First. Love yourself. Yes, first, always. yeah. 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 You have to. If you don't. And surround yourself with good friends. Yes. <laughs> you got to know where there's the right yeah. people in your life to feel comfortable, safe, and know that you can love yourself, not based on whether they love you. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Oh, yes. 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 That is the <laughs> hardest part. It's like, I got to love me, but I can't. Like, if you walked away and I didn't, and I loved you more than I love myself, then, then I'm in trouble. Oh, well, and, and that, that's, yeah. I had it, I had to. Do that. Well, I just start being selfish in a sense because I would always put everybody ahead of me, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'm not, no. I'm no good anyone if I if I continue down this road. Mm -hmm. So every so often, it's like, you know what, I, I I can't be there. I I have to do this. It's because if my mental state's not there, then I'm gonna uh, inspire anger and hatred, oh, and yeah. I don't want that. So it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, I might be disappointing, but life is about disappointments. Um, but. You know, it's just, I, I need to be healthy. Or continued unhealthy habits yes. and relationships. Yeah. 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 Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I feel like an expert and I'm not. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> I love doing what I do. Same time next week. I mean, part two. Yeah, um, I'll give you a bonus of, uh, yeah, <laughs> of no charge. Oh, my gosh. Thank you both for being my guest and sharing your, your movie. Um, and I know that you, it's, in the works of being able to be available, or do you want to share what uh, is about? We're, we're we're in talks with distribution, okay. um, but yeah, it's uh, distribution. It's, yeah, it's a it's a it's a true story that um, I think everyone should see, uh, just because it it opens doors and insights and educates. And how many times have you watched movies? I, mean, I love the Hallmark Channel. 
Oh. Because even though yeah. you might be like, oh, this is cheesy, but it always has a positive message, you sure know, does. at the end. Yeah. And yeah. once you understand where somebody's coming from, your, your heart is more where you, you have an understanding while they are hurting. And um, man, I just want to change the world one film at a time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do right <laughs> now. When I was growing up, I was told, Christine, you can't save the world. I said, yes, I can. Yes, you can. <laughs> one person at domino a time. Domino effect is one time. person in the domino right. That five percent you were talking <laughs> yep. about is a one person. That's yep. a lot. That's so, right. Yes. That's yeah. perfect. <laughs> Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to my studio sponsor, the Motivated Mind Group, your global creative agency located here in downtown Chandler. And today's sponsor episode, or who sponsored the episode, is My Source Media. It's a printing company known for its personal attention and out of box thinking that helps businesses succeed. They're a husband and wife owned small business located here, also in Chandler, Arizona that offers a variety of printed items, including small format commercial printing, large format signage, custom apparel, and promotional products having over 20 years of experience. Nice. nice. Yes, she actually has done a lot of stuff for my, um, we're working on maybe doing some stuff with my, my, my Do stories they print of print t-shirts? That's always the hardest, finding, mm -hmm. finding a good printer got, yeah. 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 t-shirts. Yeah. I'll put you in contact <laughs> with you for them, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's done my cards, we're gonna do some more great, oh, great lady. Cards too. Yes. See? Okay. Great. Yeah, there you Perfect. Go. <laughs> if you have a story you want to share, know someone who has a story, or you're a nonprofit making a difference in your community, please email me to the address of stories at christinehotchkiss.com. Until next time, everyone, I wish you well and you take care. Happy holidays. <laughs>